Hello and welcome back! If you want to support the show and see the full conversation, head over to my Patreon. Patrons get extended episodes and some bonus ones. Very exciting guest today. You know where we are. He doesn't. He's about to find out. This is a time when I met a person. My name is Ashley Clements. This and I'm Hank Green and this is the Look Back Diaries. <laughs> You gotta I, tell them who you are because I, they have no idea. Yeah, do, do, do. I, I was thinking, I was going through my head, and I was being like, is it gonna be that episode? VidCon. Oh, right. Do, 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 do. The VidCon episode. So, That's this is the cool second idea. VidCon episode. What? You know what I love about the Zubinet Diaries is that it was able to, to maintain authenticity while lying, which is a trick because, of course, no one th thinks, at least not for a long time, that this is a real person in their real life um, because it's, you know, it's the story of Pride and Prejudice. But never do we like put it out there. Like we always maintain the, the, the illusion, you know? And it's like Lizzie Bennett is a YouTuber. YouTubers go to VidCon. Mm -hmm. So cool. I love that. Well, and in world, we even have Charlotte be the hookup to get tickets. Yeah. But then, of course, the sisters are also there. Yeah. I mean, Lydia knows people. I don't really know why Jane's there. <laughs> but so this is the second. It's just a supportive, because VidCon's fun. It's all the normal VidCon reasons people fun, go to VidCon. But, but if, if like, Lizzie needed a hookup to get tickets, then, then right. have Jane. Look, everyone yeah, likes sure. Jane. I'm why not sure why we ticket? wrote in the fact that you couldn't just buy tickets. Well, we're poor. <laughs> we're not poor. We're middle class, but we, we yeah. have debt. Right. Um, like so many Americans. So I brought you on for the second VidCon episode because the first okay. one I had to give to Max, it's his first episode. So Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. They will have already seen that, and yet I have not filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the magic of filmmaking. Uh-huh, yeah. This is the first time that you and I actually met was at VidCon, oh, cool. which was why yeah. I thought that we should do this episode. It's also super random. Of course, there's tons of people walking around VidCon with cameras, vlogging. Lizzie never is holding the camera. Yeah. We filmed in some odd spots. We had been recognized a lot at this point. Like yeah. we were walking around VidCon, experiencing a weird sort of fame for the first time yeah. in our lives. And it was yeah. very, very like jarring. I wish I'd thought to maybe better prepare Warn you us. for that somehow. <laughs> like I don't- It like... was mostly very pleasant. It was a little overwhelming. Yeah. It just sort of snowballed too. Like people at first, especially when the four of us were walking around together, it was very like, mm -hmm. whoa, hey. And we were getting right, swarmed yeah. and asked for photographs and, and autographs. And we, we could see the numbers on YouTube. We knew people were watching the show but we did not have, it was a real tipping point in our understanding of yep. what the show was, what it meant to people, the kind mm -hmm. of fandom that was growing around it. And so this episode, we had to like tuck away into a, an unused conference room with the door open so that there could be any sense that there was mm -hmm. stuff going on. But it honestly yeah. visually doesn't look, doesn't look like we're at VidCon, it doesn't look great and none of that really matters but um, i think it's all, I mean, to, to me a person who's been to vidcon it looks exactly like you're at vidcon <laughs> that trash can is very anaheim convention center no slander against the anaheim convention center you need trash cans at a convention center the other, a well, here's the other thing trash. that i will notice i'm sorry i'm not letting you play the episode is that the That's first okay. episode at vidcon you are like sort of standing in the middle of the hall and the background is really far away so it looks kind of green yeah. screen and we uh, you actually commented Lizzie actually commented on the video to say, we were really there. This wasn't. is a green screen. So this this definitely doesn't look like green screen. We rarely have any kind of bokeh effect. And I think that that's one of the only episodes that we do because it's so far back, much farther back yeah. than Lizzie's mm -hmm. room. Like wall. The other time that people thought we were green screened is when we first get to Pemberley Digital. <laughs> yeah. They were also it, like, like looks nice. obviously yeah. green screen. It was like, no, it's... If, if we green screened it, we would have put like the Golden Gate Bridge behind yeah. it. We would have really yeah. sold we would have done something San Francisco. Cool. We wouldn't have just been looking out a random window in Santa Monica. Likewise, if we were going to green screen VidCon, we could have really like done a much more, this is very obviously at VidCon kind of bit. But this one, look, ha, 
it really is yeah a, a trash can and um yeah behind me yeah. i see like that waiting you know, there's kind of like a sitting yeah, area between different conference yeah it's like a big wide rooms. hall between the different rooms and then on the left hand side as i'm seeing it anyway is behind that wall is the bathrooms i know exactly what yes this is. <laughs> yes i do remember getting recognized in the bathroom a lot oh yeah mm -hmm. various convention centers because yeah. Yeah, and then they're like, "Can I?" And you're like, "Can we do this outside?" Yeah, of this is one. Of, this is one of the places where we don't do that. This is one. Yeah, there's there's not that many but, places where it's not cool, but this is kind of one. But also, some people would watch me go in and then wait outside, and that's also that's just a also weird place a little to weird. Be ambushed. Yeah, mm -hmm. but at least you know your hands are clean, your bladder is empty. A better time than that's I right. guess <laughs> than going in. <laughs> All right. Well, here she is talking. So a big part of what we're doing in this episode is setting up the Netherfield arc, mm -hmm. which we have already filmed in okay. the order of the show. This, I think we had to film with, I think a lot less time before it needed to air. I love what we have to do to make the things work. <laughs> right. That you, it's, it's like... Here's an entire oh, episode yeah. to explain how weird my mom. Yep, but that, that I love that person in the background. Like, what? Nope. Okay, should be oh, here. What's Don't happening know. in there? <laughs> Just an online video. I mean, everyone. And also, you know, I'm always just set up ready for someone to move next to me. Yeah. Just yeah. coincidentally, I like to sit off frame with good seating available next to me. <laughs> I'm so shocked to find that Lydia has appeared. Very shocking. What's so funny is also she's like waving to people, but we are in an empty room. Oh, yeah. There is There's, nobody that's a wall there. for yeah. her waving at. Um, but we are acting. You are yes. acting. I mean, the, the thing, this. it is so hard. I, can't, I cannot imagine vlogging and acting at the same time this way. Where it's like, I have to be taught, like, it's just a totally new thing that no one knew how to do. I don't well, know. it's a, it's like a very specific acting style, right? You learn yeah. different <laughs> styles for different. Good. Sorry, she's <laughs> laughing at you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> laughing with me. Yeah, laughing at your joke. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um... Yes, I also, like, the, the two dresses I wore in the VidCon episodes, I then wore all day at the convention center. Nice. Here comes uh, Laura Spencer. I remember that she had, like, done this whole adorable little Jane outfit. She wanted to feel very Jane-like, and she had done her hair for mm -hmm. the hat, and then the hat was blocking a lot of the light. We didn't really have lights. Yeah, and yeah, there was a lot of conversation of, like, can you lose the hat? And she was like, no. Because I've done my hair and I can't oh, lose that. the hat. It it's not like we had right. a hair and makeup person there to like fix yeah. anything. So we, um, I think she just tilted it farther back. Maybe, yeah. maybe it somebody found a light. I don't, I don't think so. Maybe that. Maybe. Yeah, looks great. Everyone's adorable. Everyone's very much <laughs> their character. Yep. And I yeah. had a, a Lizzie Bennett VidCon pass that was like a big deal to get made because it was a fake. Yep. I remember that. It was that. a real looking yeah. but fake pass. Yeah, we don't, we don't mess around with that too much. Yeah. But I remember I was it's like, a good, I can it's a make good that thing happen. That, it's a good thing, yeah, we had someone on the inside. <laughs> Very helpful. And so, yeah, basically this is entirely to establish, hey, we can't stay at home. <laughs> and we have to yeah. go stay someplace else. So we're going to Netherfield. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a lot of times when it was when it was like, do we want to do, <laughs> do oh god, Max, uh, do we want to um, just sort of like not have this thing happen because it doesn't really make sense, or do we want to stick with the beats of the story more accurately because we want to be constrained by Jane Austen? Like you want to let that story force us to do stuff that like might be a little bit weird, but like everybody's coming along the journey with us because they also know this story. And then we kind of decided to lean into doing it that way. It's one of my favorite things about adaptation in general. I think basically there's kind of two different directions to go with adaptation. One is really almost 
reinterpretation. And of course, we are doing a lot of reinterpretation because we're modernizing it. It's American. We're doing a lot of just it's mm -hmm. a very different universe. Yeah. But I really love the puzzle of sticking with how do mm -hmm. we make that beat work in this universe? Right. And some of the more talked about very clever things that we did on the show was making Collins a business offer rather than a proposal of marriage. Right. The yeah. sex tape for Lydia. Those are some of the kind of yeah. more widely talked about ways in which we reinterpreted but stuck to the important right. part of what happened. But I we did a lot of other things in order to keep with the journey of the of the book. And it also worked so well for our show because it meant that finally we could open up just to some different locations. Yeah, which I remember there being talk about, like, from my perspective, I'm like, that's how vlogs look. You just do it in your room. Like, I've been doing it in this room for like eight years. Um, yeah, but, but you, the... you do change the angle at the very least. <laughs> Lizzie had bit. one. Well, also, like, y'all deserved a better room. <laughs> Like, like Jenny deserved to not have the show be made in her house and like to, to have a better setup so that there was... Right. I mean, that was in so her that, bedroom yeah. and she lived yeah. with those things for... Yeah, we didn't have lights for the first big chunk mm -hmm. of the show. Yeah. We couldn't. had to get there them was eventually. Like, no, there was like no room to do a lot of what you want to do in a production in that space. So there were lots of reasons. Yeah. To do so it. it was kind of a hybrid of what actually vlogging is like except that three people are pressed up against the wall watching yeah. you do it so it's a mix it was a mixture of the worst i the, hate it when somebody's in the room when i'm vlogging it's so nerve-wracking but you're but, being a version of yourself when you're vlogging right. and i'm but but you're doing you're character. doing you're an even harder thing well so uh, yes and no i mean someone else wrote it for me so yeah. i was a part of you know, adapting that to my voice, but right. I didn't have to write the script. I had to memorize the script. That is a lot of work, but that's yeah. work I've trained for. It's a lot of pages. In a lot of pages. But it's honestly, in some ways, more weird to have to act in a room by yourself than with an audience. Like, yeah. you learn to act with an audience. And right. having some people in the room, I think, helped me because otherwise yeah. I'm just... Shouting just tossing it out into there, you just want, yeah. Just well, and I can tell you the... from my experience doing this solo that I tend to kind of stop and judge myself a lot more mm. and interrupt myself. Whereas when I'm in character, I'm going to stay through. I'm going to keep, you know, unless I really flub, right. I'm going to go. Yeah. Well, we'll do another take. Yeah. I'm much less judgmental of myself when I'm mm. acting than when I'm presenting some kind of version of myself. Well, I think a lot of people are drawn to acting because they want to take on different characters and, you know, not be themselves and explore the world through different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And so in, in many ways, that is sometimes more comfortable cool. than being mm -hmm. me. <laughs> yeah, can't relate. Oh, sorry. I, like, uh, I've, not, I've never experienced any self-consciousness, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because I really do imagine that I'm doing a performance and that like the performance is like on the other side of the camera lens, there is a person and they are, or, or a lot of people. And I am in the moments I'm talking, entertaining them. And then in the moments that I'm not, they just disappear. I mean, I guess I've had like a long time to build up that strategy. And I watch my old stuff and I like, obviously I have not yet figured out what I'm doing or how to imagine it. Now I'm very comfortable in that. Course. Yeah, I mean, you are one of the most established long time vloggers on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's a difficult balance to keep it going for a long time. And there's a lot of people who I know who have sort of been like, I'm not going to do that anymore because I don't have to. And I, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress and I'm tired of being judged all the time. And I respect them tremendously. And I am not ruling out that I might do that someday too, uh, because it's Yeah, hard. you probably won't be vlogging in your 70s, but maybe. <laughs> maybe. If there's still a planet. Yeah. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah, you know, like, I, I don't know that I would have thought, if you asked me in 2007, if I'd be doing it in 2022, I would have said no, obviously. I also just love watching, seeing 
all three of you in that episode together. It's just like the perfect cast. We got so lucky. The vibe of the sisters, it felt so sistery. Well, and at that point too, we'd been working together for several months. So it had really right. gelled. You mm -hmm. know, I think you can see the relationship. We worked very hard at the beginning. We hung out intentionally and I think did a great job for people who did not really know each other. But by this point, we had spent a lot more time together. Let's take a gander at the comments. I love the dude who walks past, <laughs> sees the recording and just does a complete U-turn to play. We got a top comment. And that, I mean, that yes. is exactly an experience that you have at VidCon where you're like, what's happening in there? Oh, oh somebody's making some content. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in that video. And Mary, is this the hmm. first mention of Mary? I always forget about Mary. I think it might be because I'm filming these out of order. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, but Mary and Kitty only came to exist because people were upset in the comments that we had not included yeah. those two sisters yeah and people are like why um, wouldn't you do that and i'm like because it one they it's a don't weird affect the to have plot? five kids two they don't yeah. do much yeah their main influence on the plot in pride and prejudice is that they kind of heighten the stakes of there are five daughters you have yeah. to find husbands for five yes. five but otherwise don't have a huge impact on the plot. I, as a fan of Pride and Prejudice, had no problem with them being excised, yeah. but yeah. lots of other fans did. There's some people's- Yeah, and I think it makes characters. sense to, since they played such a peripheral role, it made sense to, they were cousins, right? Mary became a cousin and Kitty was just a cat. Oh God. It made sense to make her into a cousin because as like a member of the family that doesn't come up that much, that's more like a cousin right. than it would be like- And that's how the joke started that we always forget about Mary because we had right. just not- mentioned her yet. That's a fan influence. You got it a Mary and a much. Kitty because yeah. you complain. <laughs> I love that the kitty was a cat. That's like a that's I as love that you didn't Bingley. remember that. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, both of those are very genius choices, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you know what we didn't talk about? The whole point I brought you on for this one is that we met. We met in a right. Tony Roma's because it's Anaheim and there are only chain restaurants. <laughs> That's it. And yep. for some reason, Tony Roma's was chosen. Uh -huh. And I remember being really nervous to meet you because you were my boss and mm -hmm. because I'd watched you so much. You know, and also I'm at a convention that you created. You were a big yeah, deal. That you I was running. Deal. Yeah, yeah. Hank. And so, yeah, I remember being very nervous and I remember feeling like I had to, I don't know, I felt very like, performative and weird at that dinner and you know they sat us next to each other so we could talk but i was just like hi ah. i'm cool i'm cool i'm a cool person <laughs> i felt very weird it didn't come across that you felt very weird but i have been in that seat as well been like how on earth do i uh, how am i supposed to act in this situation mm -hmm. at that point you had been watching three months of videos and editing yeah. them was i still editing i enjoyed doing it and also i was like I know how to edit video blogs and I don't want someone to edit this. It was very cool to to see all of you for the first time after having had this thing happen with me like sitting by myself in Missoula and being like, y'all are just doing it. This is happening. And the team has assembled and did it feel like being in a theater cast together? Cause that's like the only thing I have, like that sort of summer camp feel where you're like, yeah, we're being thrown into this to make, to make a thing together. There's like almost no better feeling than a bunch of competent people making something interesting. I agree. And I was sort of jealous of all of you that you, it felt like you were in the midst of that. But it also like felt cool that I, I, you know, was a part of it. You were a big part of it. You were always kind of our fairy godfather sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I, in going through my old emails, found an email that Jenny Powell had copy and pasted a message from you because at this point we did not have your email address. <laughs> yeah. And you like, you, you wanted us to know that you thought it was going well, but you, not enough to like give us the ability to write you back. <laughs> and, uh, and so like from Jenny Powell, we got mm -hmm. a me like a message from Hank and it was you saying, you know, it looks great. And I'm really happy with how it's going and you're all doing a great job and like keep doing it. So, you know, you did feel to me yeah. like this kind of removed boss yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Executive producers, you know, I guess that's what they do. Thanks so much for joining me and we will see yes. you in a future episode. Okay. I'll be coming back soon wearing the same outfit. Me too. Are you just wearing that shirt for every day you're shooting this? Damn right. So, is that why you don't have to think about it? That's great. And I don't have to sacrifice every item of clothing that I own to being recognizable. <laughs> Something I have personally experienced in the past. Yeah. <laughs> about 10 years ago.
Yeah. Or you're like, yeah, I've seen that one. I've seen that one. Yep. Oh, Lord. 